There I am. Hi. Hi. Look at everybody on here. Oh my goodness. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm just waiting to I'm right I'm right down everybody's names because then I can remember who's working on what I'm not like taking attendance <laughs> To see if we're naughty or nice, right? That's right. Well, I'm going to give everybody 100%. So. Yeah. We have knitting group happening here in the shop right now in the other room. And probably a group of maybe six or seven knitters out there. Well, nice to see everybody here tonight. Um, I think we have to start with Mary Ellen because you're wearing your beautiful anchor. Oh my word. Beautiful. Yeah, I, it's finished and it fits perfectly. Can and I love say it. it. Pardon me? I, I was just going to say, you know, Know, better words you couldn't hear when somebody's talking about their finished sweater. Finished and fits perfectly is pretty much top notch. <laughs> um, and it was a, a, a pleasure to knit. The yarn was wonderful. And I almost, uh, I got so bored when I was doing the first one with the stock knit. I guess because this had a little more texture and some different shades through it. It, it didn't seem to bother me as much. Mm. Uh, Not as boring. Yeah. Uh -huh. But it's, I think I'll be wearing it a lot. And to remind us, what did you do on your sleeves, Mary Ellen? Did you, yep. I made them longer. Mm -hmm. And you did taper them? Um, taper them? No, I just yeah. went straight. I just did five extra rows and then I did, the ribbing with one size needle smaller. Nice. The other sweater I did eight rows. I was afraid I was going to run out of yarn, so I was a little more <laughs> conservative with this one. But and you did five rows overall longer. Yes. Than the pattern called for. Okay. I did what the pattern said. Then I did five more rows. It's so lovely. It's absolutely gorgeous on you. Such a nice color, such a summery color. Just, yeah. I'm so tempted to make that blue one that I think, I forget what it's called, but it's just such a bright, beautiful blue. The yarn? Yes. The in, yarn. In, the, in, the, in the Sonata? Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, is it a really like rich... Um, ultramarine kind of is that or is it the navy that it's not the navy of? yeah it's, okay it's the other brighter color but okay. i think two in a row is is enough for right now okay all right great well congratulations congratulations on finishing love it thank you thank you and so what's next on your needles well i'm just doing a swatch for a baby sweater oh right and your baby sweater yeah, and I think I'm I'm making the anchor hard again yep. for, for for children because she saw the other one I did and she really liked it. Nice. So, and it's an easy pattern. Perfect. And I have yarn for Christmas socks that I, I have to wind or that this will be for a gift. Love that. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Well, great. All right. Thanks for sharing. Let's see. Let's see, Beth, did you, I got your email with your beautiful pictures, but it's nice to see you here. Yes. Yes. So um, I, I finished up the, the top. Um, it was using the 
ranunculus um, pattern. And it was so easy. I, I'm, I'm already like going, and it, like when you look on Ravelry at the different projects, you know, everyone looks a little bit different depending on what kind of yarn they use. I used a fingering, so it's really, um, really lightweight. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely like already planning um, to do a couple more. I want to try one in a little bit heavier weight. And then I had made this um, uh, granny square bag, um, like the, the I, they used to be called fanny packs, but now they wear them diagonal across their uh, shoulder. Um, so I did one of those. Um, so now I'm working on um, a top for my daughter and I started in one pattern and uh, I just did not like the pattern. So then another pattern came out um, the beginning of July. So this is, it's, well, let me see if I can get um, there. You can maybe see it's like all different kinds of, it's a variegated green, but it's a, it'll be like a, it's all ribbing, but it's different um, widths of ribbing. So it's like two by two, four by four, three by three, and, and just a, a random pattern. And then it works up into a sleeveless top. So mm -hmm. it, 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 it has negative ease. So, you know, it's supposed to be a little bit closer fitting. Well, and with the um, ribbing, that would make sense. And what's the name of the pattern, Beth? Oh, I'm going to get it wrong. So there is a Danish woman. And this is the second one that I've participated in, who does a pattern during the Tour de France. And she offers up the pattern for free. And then you knit along as you're watching the bike race. So this one I think is called the Strop, S-T-R-O-P, okay. um, prop. And what is her name? It's Elizabeth something. Um, it, she's Danish. Um, I could probably Google her up just so that we have it in the, but I love the idea that, you know, especially with the, all that ribbing, your negative ease would look so great. Yeah. And I just think it'll fit my daughter better. Um, the, the other one was, um, and I've made some of her stuff, uh, top, uh, again, a sleeveless top, um, by Jesse May. Oh yeah. And, um, but it was, it had a little bit of ribbing and then it was just all stocking out and it was sort of a halter. Um, and I don't know. I just, when I tried it on her, I didn't, I didn't like the fit. So she doesn't know I changed it up completely, but we'll see how this goes. Um, nice. And then I was going to say, I was a couple of weeks ago, I was at traveling on a weekend and went to a yarn store in Whitehaven, PA. And they had the anchor um, cardigan for in an adult size. And I loved it. Um, so I grabbed up some um, uh, yarn to, to work on it probably in the fall, I'll probably, but it looked so nice as a cardigan and she had it like in, in sort of a cream color. So mm -hmm. it was like a nice neutral cardigan. Love that. Well, thanks for sharing your, your current, your finished. I believe I'm, I'm um, because I'm getting ready to go away on vacation. I have been doing a lot of um, like knitting, uh, knitting ahead, or sorry, writing emails ahead. I'm planning my knitting project, but I'm also planning the emails that will keep going out to people. And so I believe that, uh, Beth, your, your finished works, including that fun um, granny square little pouch will be featured not in this week's, but maybe the next week's. I love that granny pouch. It's so simple for you guys. Um, who are here in the Zoom? It's it's like three granny squares, um, and four. They, it's four squares. Four. Okay. Yes. So there's like one on the front and back, and then you take one square. Yeah. And and kind of okay. I have got to post it. Hold on. So I there's like a, a visual. I'm trying to put a little bit of a lining into it. So I haven't, you know, that's what I was working on now. That was my like one question was, where are you going to line it? So it's kind of like, there's one that's a square and on the back it's a, it matches. And then you fold this one in half, like a little burrito or a little taco shape. And so it makes kind of a little cute, cute idea. And that was one of my questions for you was, where are you going to line it? So that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And does it have a zipper in the top? It so the pattern did that uh, I was following did not have any kind of attachment, and I thought about a zipper, and then I'm like, oh, this is getting complicated. 
Um, but I found at Joanne's uh, a very small size sort of decorative um, magnetic class mm -hmm. that I thought wouldn't be too heavy um, for the pouch because I had used some class before that were magnetic and I was like, oh, that's just going to be too heavy. But this one seemed like small enough and light enough that if I center it, I think it'll, that'll be enough, especially if, with the lining in it, that that would be enough to sort of keep it closed. Mm -hmm. Okay. The great little project idea and a free pattern, like you said. So yeah, that will be linked up. I found one anyway. Well, thanks, Beth. I'm so glad that you came on tonight. Yeah, I was glad I could make it. Um, let's see who wants to share next who we got here. Any, any volunteers? So I have a story about my finish along that... <laughs> I might get choked up telling, but um, so I live in Alabama, not close to the goat, don't get to go there much. And the yarn shop that's close to me that I like to go to is in Nashville, which is a, a long way away, you know, hour and a half. And they put out a newsletter and, and um, it's a one woman shop. She put out a newsletter and she had this yarn in it that I, I loved and a free pattern if you bought the yarn. And so it was a yellow color, which is something I don't really use much. And so I wanted to see the yarn myself rather than just order it. We happened to be in Nashville for a concert. So we went by the store and I, I asked her to show it to me and she um, pulls up um, the yellow ball of yarn and um, it has a project attached to it. And I said, oh, that's the color I was interested in. And, and I said, and I wanted to see the sample shawl that you had that went with it. She says, well, I don't have the sample. And she says, it's not done yet, but I'll sell you this ball of yarn with the sample attached to it as far as it is. And I said, oh, no, I can't do that. And she, she looked at me, she stopped talking, and she said, my mother died Saturday. And she did all my samples. And this is as far as she got. And so she sold me a ball of yarn and her mother's work, even still on the needles. Oh. And I said, let me make the sample for the shop. She said, no, make the sample for you. Oh. So it was pretty touching. Wow. <laughs> and um, she even, so here's the pattern. It's really cute. And so, Iris, it reminded me of, it's bigger, but it reminded me of, uh, it's a similar pattern to the windswept yeah. um, from the cruise, except it's it's symmetrical, you know, it's mm -hmm. not uh, asymmetrical. Yeah. And, um, anyway, so that's my story of my finish along. So one, I have to figure out where she is, and two, can I match this gauge? Oh, wow. But, that is that is an incredible heartwarming story. I mean, <laughs> I mean, this was the only ball, you know, it's the one I wanted and it was just like, I mean, how could that be? Wow. But that's my story. Oh, and what is the yarn? Is it, it's a concept so it's yarn? It's called Concept by- uh, Concept uh, Silk? Concept by Katia. Yeah. Uh, Bohemian Silk. Okay, and the pattern's also bohemian silk. It is. And yeah. It's, okay. You know, it's for this yarn, and it's the pattern is um. It looks long. It's really not that long. It's um, but it's in a bunch of languages. It's, mm. it's a, nice. Each language is yeah. Each language is one page. Well, that's very special. Yeah. So that's my project now. I just finished one I was working on. Well, making things really can bring us together. Isn't that the truth? Yeah, I mean, that's one of the things I like this. I mean, I have a whole list of notes of things to look up, you know, new patterns to try. Wow, well, would anybody else like to go next, sharing where you're at with your projects? Did you get your Stephen West project going? 
I sure do. I'm working on it right now because I'm I'm a, I'm pretty much able to keep going with my um with with keeping up with the two socks um two yeah. socks before the next clue comes. They don't so far. It's been easy for me to keep up with that. But so I have. Oh, oh boy. yeah, yeah. I've oh. done. I finished mine. Oh, let me see. Let me see. Hold on. Um, I'm going to spotlight you. So you've got, you've got caught, caught up. Okay, great. And I did the heel. Yeah. So I'm ready for tomorrow. I made the leg of mine a little shorter because I, I did, a, I, I did few. <laughs> yep. I did fewer of those uh, woven Works. bands that we just did. Yeah. Yep. I, I did one or two less in this, um, pattern I like yep. this one better I did too I I felt like my my woven strips looked very lumpy and in, yes. in places I was like I actually took it out the first time and because yeah. I thought well did I do something wrong well I didn't and I but... kept counting because I one looks thicker but it's not it's the same number of um see how that one and this yeah. one they, it's a they... really fun pattern it's so much yeah. fun and then I kept thinking that these little polka dots weren't, I thought they were more lined up and they're not. So they came out. It looks all right. And I um, love it. Love your the heel, colors. The heel turned really easy. Yeah. But that's kind of the heel I always make on socks. So it's anyhow, I'm ready for that tomorrow. Yay. So, me, I love the fact that we can wake up and have our clue first thing in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I did finish my winter sweater. And in the heat last week, when I had to have it all on my lap, mm. it was really <gasps> uh, mm. has the thing so there. So beautiful. And so I have to block it and really sit out, but it's going to take a while to dry. Yes. <laughs> I haven't even tried it on because it's just so hot, but it, it got finished. So that was. And now I'm just. And I forget your pattern stocks. name. For, wrote about your pattern name for your sweater, Eileen. Ah, uh, it's okay. You don't have it. it was in a magazine. I can find it. I think. No pressure. Um, if you think I'll of have it, to look for it now that I yeah. threw it away. My working copy. Uh huh. In a knitting magazine, uh, one of those that you put away. Yeah. And you leave it, and then I had some yarn. I just wanted to make it because it looks simple. Well, if you think of it when you check for it. Yeah. Um, I, I'll think of it and then maybe I can find it. Kristen's here in the office. Kristen's going to say hi. Hi, everyone. How's it going? Hello. Nice to see you all. Um, let's see. I always am in the middle of knitting groups, so I never get to see you. Sorry for my messy background. Oh, it's, it's yarn <laughs> office light. <laughs> What's the nice yarn to, back there? Nice to see you. I was popping in here to grab something. I was trying to be quiet, but she announced. No, no, no. <laughs> well, it's always knitting group here, so I can't join the Zoom. But are well, you guys we're finishing? You joining us today. All right. Have you? Has anybody finished anything? Oh, so oh yeah. Things. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Inspired to do new things. Yay! That's <laughs> a good group lined up. That's awesome. It's much more fun to start than it is to finish. <laughs> I'm gonna write Linda. Hi, Linda. I miss you. <laughs> I miss you too. I'll oh, be there I might soon. Go, I might go on um on the cruise in September. Ooh. Because I had so much fun. fun. I what, thought it was what? a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, it was so much fun. We we're we went. She went. Linda went on the knitting cruise with uh, with me. Um, the four day sailing cruise. It was so fun. It was. I, and, well, I will let you ladies get back to it. Perfect. And I'll get back to the other group. Thanks for stopping <laughs> by. Bye. Um, Linda, I just wrote down your quote because it might be the best quote of this whole finish along. It's much more fun to start than finish. It is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can think of so many projects, you know, and, and then it's ridiculous because there's no way you can possibly get them all done in a life. 
You know, I was just saying that to somebody else, you know, my, my to be made is ever growing and it's growing faster than I can make the things. Yeah, yeah. actually, I think I talked about that in the podcast that I did this week. Um, okay. So who haven't we heard from? It looks like we need to hear from that maybe Teresa. Okay. I'll go. Okay. Um, I uh, was working last, we chatted, on these gloves from um, Mountain Meadow. Remember these red and orange, oops, gloves from Mountain Meadow? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was working on the, the um, second one because it's like second sock syndrome. It's second mitten syndrome. And I got to the thumb. And it screwed up somehow. And I said, I'm just not dealing with this right now. So I've put it away. And I have a lovely ball of yarn that I bought from Bad Sheep Yarn called Something Smutty. That's kind of a purple mm. pink. And I discovered a series of four um it's called four of a kind shawls they're thin kind of like the uh what what what's the name of that little bitty tie the sophie uh-huh it's mm -hmm. like the sophie but i think it's a little longer so you can see oh. mm -hmm. and there's four variations of that and i'm doing the random act of kindness i think is the one i'm doing and so i was working away on it see it's real sweet and airy nice it's i'm a, not quite halfway because you get halfway and then there's a centerpiece and then you narrow off to the other mm. side when my friend called me and said you know 15 years or whatever ago you made this lovely dishcloth that we've been using in our kitchen and it's almost threadbare now do you think you could make me <laughs> another one <laughs> and I thought oh what a great diversion I don't remember making that I said are you sure and she said yes so I went back through my patterns and I had some leftover cotton so I just kind of crocheted up this little jewel which nice. is really nothing and then I found the free knit pattern on Ravelry can you see it okay love that edging it looks so good and it's just little yarn overs and it's done I'll show you because I finished one and I've started another. It's done on the, you know. On the bias. On the bias. Mm -hmm. So you increase up to here and then you decrease until you get down to five stitches. And so it's been kind of fun to go back old school and just sit and do a num num thing that I can finish in a day's time in between working here and there. So yep. That's kind of what I'm working on. I've got a couple of shawls in the line after I finish this, this one. I promise I'll finish that one before I start another. But that's just kind of what I'm doing. Love it. I love that, you know, here's something that's gotten a lot of use from a friend of yours. I know. You know, that, clear, that probably you did not have to spend that much time making, but well, that they've used all these years. And I know it. And 15 years ago is about when I retired and I told myself, when I retire, I'm going to take up knitting again because I knitted as a young adult and then I got married and had children and it was difficult to do that. So I crocheted. I crocheted all kinds of stuff and blankets and everything for all those years. And I said, I'm going back to knitting when I retire. So that was the first thing I learned how to do was knit washcloths and socks not socks but slippers and hats and you know the, those little easy things so mm -hmm. I had totally forgotten I had done that for her so lovely fun. really nice um let's see we how about Teresa how are you doing Teresa pretty well so um earlier this week I finished the uh, mitten I had been working on. Um, Cute. And uh, that was a really quick project, but most of the week uh, that I was working on it, I spent um, 
rejiggering the pattern so that it would actually fit my rather small hands. Um, but it fits now, it fits like a glove, I guess. Um, and then I gave myself a little bit of a break yesterday, knit up a quick dishcloth. Oh, there um, you go. <laughs> now I'm on the second mitten because one, one just won't do. Uh, so I uh, should be able to get through this pretty quickly. And then I'm going to make a set for my husband. Um, I'm hoping that I can just use the pattern for him, but we'll see. <laughs> well, good for you. And nice to take a little breather, you know, with the, um, with that, with that dishcloth, dishcloth or a good yep. summer project or a good like palette cleanser. Maybe we could think yeah. of it between bigger projects when you need a break. Like potato chip knitting or just Netflix <laughs> knitting, something yes. easy that you don't have to pay too much attention to. Exactly. Exactly. Well, let's see. Thanks, Teresa. How about Wendy? Wendy, nice to see you. Thank you. Good to see you. So I was hoping I'd have a lot more done since we did a road trip, seven hours each way to out to my son's in upstate New York for his daughter's birthday party. But we had Victoria with us, so it was a lot of distractions. But I'm almost done with this, which is mm, that's the, pretty. The um, it's the cowl. It's that unique yarn that you just put in the post for the socks. Yes, the Turkish yarn. Yeah, they also posted on um, the other. And then I've. And what up. weight is what weight is the yarn you're using? It's is Worcester, it and it's. It's just a dream to work with. It's so, yep. soft. it reminds me of a Malabrigo Worcester. It's just nicer than I even thought. Is it self-striping? Yeah, it is self-striping and they have it in so many Gorgeous. different colors. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Really. And oh, what, is that gonna, yeah. what is that going to be? Is that a sweater for your it's little granddaughter? Cowl. No, it's a cowl. Oh, a cowl. That's right. You said that. Sorry. It was a yarn, local yarn store thing. And then I also am working on this shadow cowl hmm. it's um it was a local yarn store thing and it's called beach ball hmm. they also featured it in the first um in the first yarn uh the crawl we did that something it's fino shadow cowl okay it's in it's, it comes out nice but but then like were, I was away Sunday. We were driving back. And then when I tried to get on, maybe I misunderstood it. Or, do you have to pay $10 for each Sunday? No. No. One time. No, just the one. Yeah. So I didn't get an email to the, to um, watch the recording. Oh. Um, and I wrote to them several times. And they said, it'll be in your email. It's, they just keep saying it's in your email. Did you check your spam? Because sometimes it mine la lands in the spam. Okay. Yeah. I picked all of that. But anyway, um, I'm still mm -hmm. trying to figure that out. I won't sign up again then. <laughs> yeah, then, that's yeah, funny. I've been working on this baby blanket that's um, it's actually cumulus from nice. the store. The one that you stripe, self-striping, whatever. So, but... You, is so, that the degradé, the cumulus degradé? Yes, that and uh, and that one starts out very light and then goes to a very very dark, almost mm. naked. But it's um, yeah, nice and sea foam and all that. So yeah, a lot of a lot of projects. <laughs> a lot of projects. So many good projects. I love that cumulus. I, we recommend that a lot for baby blankets and kid blankets. Um, it's our just yarn, yeah. Our yarn store person just made a striped sweater with it, and used the turquoise, and then used a degradé and faded it. The stripes. Wow. It was a striped sweater that they Ravelry um, like advertised, but anyway, it came out really pretty because she, like, it went down the sleeves too in the same faded braid Ooh. Okay, but really pretty so i may try that one next <laughs> that's wonderful so well keep on keeping on with it yes lots of good things i have to switch projects sometimes when my hands get tired or whatever 
Well, That's yeah, I'm having need. carpal tunnel surgery Friday. So I said, can I knit? And they said, well, you can try. And if you can, you can. Okay. Well, best of luck with that. I hope it goes okay and that you're knitting without pain. So yeah, I don't know if anyone else has ever had that and knitted. Well, I think, let's see, Judy. How are you doing, Judy? Okay. I'm doing fine. I'm finishing up my little button. I got my buttonholes and I'm just finishing it all up on my first sweater. And then I just have to sew a few seams and I have just the buttonholes to do on my other one. So then I, I was planning on doing a, a lot of knitting last night, but unfortunately we were without power and uh that made it difficult we've been having lots of these rainstorms mm. and i'm in nashville right now yes you had terrible storms coming your way now isn't there i i don't even pay attention when Kentucky. they come they come uh yeah well i hope i thought that was over with but maybe more is coming i don't know i, I to be honest with you i really don't pay attention I, when it gets here, I, then I pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> because so many times it seems like they say a big storm's coming in, it goes north or south this year. And, you know, so I just, I just sort of cope with whatever. I've got a gas stove so I can cook and everything. Uh, so I don't, I don't really, I don't know. But I you need the light husband, to, you need the light to knit by. Yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah. And that that was that made it difficult. And then this morning I had some, my husband had an appointment he wanted me to go with. And so I had to go. You know, he's starting some physical therapy and wanted mm -hmm. me to go along. So I didn't really get as much done as I had anticipated. I mean, I was sure I would have everything done by now, but it just hasn't worked out. Sometimes you that's know. what happens. Life gets life happens, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm disappointed, but there's not much you can do about it. Yeah. You know? you go yeah. with the flow. Go with the flow, <laughs> indeed. Well, I hope you keep yeah. your power tonight. Yeah, I hope so, too. Something's amiss here. <laughs> Anyhow, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. No, no. Yeah, definitely. nothing, nothing too exciting other than trying to get this little monster finish that I've been sitting for two years oh. and and uh you know i'm just trying to get some things done before i start something new well that's that a, that's one of our our goals here with the finish along isn't it yes and you've <laughs> so got that far. you've got that cowl to look forward to when you're done oh i am so excited about that that is it's just uh it just is so, it's so pretty well and, hopefully uh, it won't be the nightmare pattern that jill had were you on oh no 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 this one is it's the I, I i would i would never have started anything like that and i think you just have to be so brave to do that and so experienced and i'm not that brave or experienced for something like that no this one is just a rectangle mm -hmm. a long rectangle and then somehow at the end you so um you knit it together. Nice. And um yeah, there's some way of knitting it together. And there's just a very simple graph. And you just repeat it. It looks more complicated than it is. Excellent. Because it really uh I've done I've done a lot of cross stitch and I've worked a lot with um patterns, you know, I mean uh graphs. So I feel pretty confident that I can, as, and it's just straight knitting. I mean, there's not much <laughs> right. I can get wrong with that. So I'm I'm really looking forward to it, and uh, and I'm and I'm also looking forward to getting this finished. Once well, thanks for weighing in, Judy. Nice to hear from you. Okay, so, sorry I was late. Oh, that's okay. No problem. Mm -hmm. I was watching a podcast today. It's the Wool needles hands, I think is the name. I'm gonna look in my little book. Um it okay. is oh. yep, wool needles hands and 
she the one that I was watching was techniques that like five techniques that I've been avoiding and you know it's just I just it came on after another another video that I was watching and she had a great quote which is she kept saying about you know just a, this was her personal take on things you know it was just one person but after each one she sort of had had ways of qualifying why it was not for her uh, it, whether wh whatever technique it was you know for example sh she brought up Amiragu Amiragurami I think um the little knitted or crocheted uh kind of creatures animals that have become super popular and she was just like nope that was not for her it just seemed like too much fussing with little bits and shaping and she just didn't like it but so she had this phrase that was the juice just isn't worth the squeeze. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. Um, so it makes me wonder, like, of this group, you know, what knitting technique or style or something related to it, like, what is something that for you would not be worth the squeeze? Short rows. Short rows? Okay. Yeah, exactly. Mm. <laughs> At the Cables. shoulders. I think Cables? I will agree. that last yeah. that last shirt I did that Durrell or whatever it was had short rows across the back. Got totally lost. Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard to keep things straight. Um, I think for me, any type of really fine or complicated lace work is just oh, not worth that. the squeeze for me. Yeah. I just. I don't like, you know, I feel like, you know, every time you learn a new technique, whatever it is, you're learning that whole new visual vocabulary, like we've talked about. And I don't know, the the lace vocabulary is just not in a language that I is easy for me to learn. So if it's more than just some eyelets or something like that, no. I don't even look at them. <laughs> Oh, I just remembered I finished something that I started in the springtime when I was having oh, cool. knee surgery. Yeah. And, and I was pretty apprehensive about it in the first place. And I thought, well, I'm just going to make this and then I'll rip it out because I know I won't like it, which is crazy. But that's, I just wanted to try it. So it's a skirt. Oh, oh, Ooh. oh I love it. Oh, oh. oh. I think it's oh. lovely. So what made me think of this is it has short rows for the butt. Ah. <laughs> it has the short rows are at the hem when you get started and then they're up at the bottom of the waistband. It, but it was pretty easy to do. You know, I can't even see them. Well, partly it's because the yarn is kind of textured, but and it has lace. Yeah, so, beautiful lace. Hold the lace detail. up so we can see. Oh, yeah. <gasps> see how it's a little longer in the back that's yeah. where your butt yeah yep that makes it even but and you I know it. It actually when I was telling people I was knitting a skirt they were going oh my god and I well you know <laughs> I was thinking the same thing you know but it's actually pretty nice and the pattern says knitted skirts are the new sweatpants okay <laughs> all right knitted I like that so it it was fun it was actually pretty fun and um it it what you know this the lace is a pretty simple repeat I, it was so simple I forgot it now you know it wasn't stressful or anything what was the name of the pattern if I could ask so the name of the pattern is called shake rag skirt and you know there was a shake rag top some years ago in this just shake rag uh -huh. was an art festival great and what is the yarn this yarn is juniper moon's zoe mm. oh zoe yeah and what is it made of what is it wool cotton or cotton oh. and linen i think oh okay that's why it looks so pretty the delay mm. nice have you tried it on I have. I mean, I tried it on with, it has elastic in it. I don't know if you can tell that. Can you? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, so the inside of the waistband is ribbed and the outside is flat. Mm. You put a little pearl row at the top to make it, I mean, it's a little janky, but it's okay. And um, I made it, the pattern said, 
you know, if you don't want this to touch you, you need to be honest with your measurements, which I know people that are not honest with their measurements. So I made it, you know, I thought about how many inches and, and it just sort of lays on my hips. So it's not clingy or anything. That's nice. it's, it's a nice A-line, but it was fun. Love that. Thank you. I haven't worn it yet, but I'm going to. Well, if you ever feel like taking a, having somebody take your picture when you're wearing it, it might be fun to share with the other finish alongers. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Thank Maybe you. I'll do that this weekend. Ed Zoe is a nice yarn too for the anchor sweater. Mm -hmm. It's a really nice one. But the one thing I love is brioche knitting, but I always seem to make mistakes in it. And it's so unforgiving. I mean, it's hard to rip out and hard to right. go back. But I love to do brioche things. The only thing that I can really succeed in is the flat pieces. It's hard to do the hats with the decreases for me anyway. But I do because I took several classes and one was Andrea Mowry's hat that Harlow, I think, was the mm -hmm. hat. Yeah. So are you going to do a class, aren't you, Iris? Um, so we did our first round of beginner brioche um, and it was super popular and we now have several brioche knitters who are onto like their second hats wow. and um, we really had a, a strong focus on fixing and understanding the stitches and um, and so I think it was by and large pretty successful there were definitely you know I felt like I was like just being like a shark around the table around the table around the table um, but folks were really patient with themselves which is huge I made some videos to help with that and so we actually already sold out of we're going to do another one in August starting in a couple weeks and then another one in October so wow. Yeah, it's fun. And which leads me to admit a little something again, kind of guiltily, but this is what happens. I some of the briochers really were interested in a kind of intermediate level class, like what could be next in terms of techniques or project ideas. So I have, a, I just, because I'm going on vacation, sometimes you like to buy a new project for your vacation, since I know my, my contrast glass socks will, I'll get through my clues. Um, so I bought yarn to try out a potential pattern for that intermediate level brioche class, something that would add, you know, one or two other techniques, but not be like crazy. Cause I think when I've made the really organic brioche hats with all the like leaves and swirls, it can be a little hard to keep yourself placed in time a little bit and just sort of seeing what you're doing. So the pattern, um, is by Leslie Ann Robinson, who wrote a book that's got a great, it's a really great reference for brioche. The whole beginning part um, has very broken down some of the basic techniques in a really nice way. And she's got some patterns in it too. And this is a cowl, a large cowl that you would double wrap. And it's um, kind of a chevron situation where there's blocks of garter stitch and then blocks of brioche that have like, um, you know, a decrease on either side of a center stitch. So to me, that felt like it might be good for a next project because you'd have those breaks for the for the garter where you could take a breath before you have to pay attention for the brioche. So we'll see what I think after I after I do my sort of test knit. Yeah. But, There's a neat brioche sweater in one of the more recent MDK books. Okay. That, that I would love to do, but I was like, I don't know if I could. Well, so, you know, oh, go ahead, Linda. You know, what I was going to, well, one, I didn't get the name of the author of the book. I wanted that. Mm -hmm. Leslie. Leslie Ann Robinson. I can put this in the link below the video when I post it. Okay. Um, because we've got copies of that book and she's actually Andrea Mowry's sister-in-law. Fun okay. fact. Um, I can't remember the title offhand, but it's like, it's something like beginner brioche or something okay. like that. And there's a really cool top in there that I really like too, but I thought it'd be too boring for the intermediates, but it's basically like a brio. It's an, it's a kind of a cropped or you could make it whatever length, but brioche is in basically a tube up to the arms. And then you do sort of garter stitch top. And so it mm -hmm. has a really, it lays on you really nicely. And then the brioche is sort of around your mid section and it looks really great. So there's a few patterns in there that I thought were pretty good. Yeah. And I was going to say about 
you mentioned MDK. So they had one of those little field guide books on brioche and there's a cowl in there that is, it, it's, you know, just straight. So you don't have to worry about any um, little, I don't know what you call those when they go together and make the points and the shapes and stuff, mm -hmm. but it makes it be reversible because you do do two colors. And that was good for me, but I started out my first brioche hat well, it might be my only one, uh, was humongous. You know, it was just huge. It was a complicated pattern, but it was big enough to fit my son's head. The only problem was it was made in girl colors, which he actually <laughs> loved to lots of compliments on, but it's peach and turquoise and blue and all this, and he likes that. But um, I went back and then did that cowl out of the MDK book, and that was much easier to learn and see the stitch composition when you could just do straight knitting no i did do that one that one and then i also did the scarf uh-huh i did the, i just did the, finish the scarf that long one that brioche yeah the really long one mm -hmm, and i did mm -hmm. two balls of the um wonderland yarn you know the very mm -hmm. ones that you do so and that was fun that was that was easy for me but yeah for the other in the round things if you yep it gets yep well, I did a I did a really simple hat pattern for the class that I designed for the class. Um, and I I might if I if I can, you know, it's it's I tried to design it so that it was really friendly for beginner brioche language, because one of I think the the challenges as a new learner is the way that the I don't want to nerd out too much for the people that are like don't care about brioche, but <laughs> <laughs> the language, the, the pattern writing language is a little different and it doesn't like we all know what a slip one me means you know we know how to slip one and we know what a yarn yeah. over is and so in the traditional abbreviations for brioche it reads something like slip one yarn over is one of the techniques and to me that sounds like not what you're actually supposed to be doing so I tried to write the pattern I called it the like training wheels pattern and then I also gave my knitters the like real language you know easy reader pattern and then the, the regular and so that they could compare the two but i thought that that would be a little bit easier so if i if i might put it on ravelry maybe um i've never done that before but um had some test knitters do it and then my my brioche knitters so maybe that would help other people learn to love brioche that sounds great i always rewrite the instructions on a little index card in my language so that I don't get confused because I that yeah that whatever the brios talk is I don't understand and that was actually <laughs> Linda that was one of the things that I took away from that that Leslie Ann Robinson book too was she did something very similar she wrote it in a way that sounded that actually described what you were doing like yf yarn forward slip one Right, you know that that mm -hmm, kind of mm -hmm. thing, which was a little bit different. But I'll make sure to add that right in the video when I. Well, let's see. We've had some folks join us here. I found I found the pattern for you. I had I had an inspiration. Oh, perfect! And found the magazine. In Everyday cool. Well, no, it's no, um, is, here's the name croissant you know, sweater. Croissant. Croissant. Yeah. Nice. It's, I love it. Um, by Kristen Janik, J A N C U K. Okay. And Thank it's you. The magazine is like from Knit Space 2019. Cool. <laughs> but it has two good pictures. That's awesome. In the tan. Looks cozy. It um, will get cold again <laughs> someday. Yeah. Thank you, Eileen, for following up with that. Yeah, I just had a brain inspiration and I went to the one drawer and there it was. There it was. Perfect. Um, well, Julie, it looks like you hopped on. Nice to see you. Welcome. Oh, you're, I think, muted right now. Sorry. That's okay. I'm that kind of a day. Gotcha. Um... I was on a business call that ran for an hour and a half. Ooh. So well, thanks for getting here. <laughs> I tried. So I'm still knitting the, the baby blanket because that's about where the brain is. Yep. 
baby blanket is good knitting for your brain when you need a break. Yep. And what's the pattern? Um, do, do, do. Let's me see. I'm at the point where if it's not written down, I won't know. Uh, sliding is fun. Oh yeah, the sliding is fun. I forgot. Yeah, yep. that's the same as this one that I'm doing. Oh. oh. What colors are you doing? Well, I'm doing a turquoise and a degradé and a seafoam. Yeah, they all come out so different. Yeah, yeah I, I was surprised oh. at how long it took my um, gray degradé to move from the dark to the light. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, um, I'm down to probably the last fifth or so of the ball, so not too much longer. It's lovely. That's great. Well, we need, that's again, why we need lots of different projects for different times when your brain needs different knitting. Mm -hmm. For sure. And I think we had Bev on here for just a hot second. I think she's running the quilt retreat this weekend. So she's probably just popped in at a free moment and then she probably had to pop out. So, so during the pandemic, I decided that I would start and finish a project. So I finished all my projects that I had going that I liked. I mean, some I've had for 20 years. I've never done <laughs> and, um, and then I would start one project and I would finish it because like I said, starting is so much more fun than finishing. And my husband was going, oh, this is such a great idea. And then I think he finally realized that just because you were doing one project at a time didn't mean you weren't off buying yarn for other projects. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I still, I mean, I'm thinking a mile a minute, you know, so all during the pandemic up until probably the last six months, I really stuck to that. Start a project, finish a project. But now I probably have three going for, like you said, I need those ones that you can just watch TV. Yep. You don't have to think. Yes. And you might even be drinking then too. So that makes it different too. <laughs> I think it was um, possibly um, one of the MDK people, why can't I think of their names, um, who said like, this isn't your day job. This is your hobby and right. it should be enjoyable, you know? And it's, right. it's really true. I think yeah. that I knit better in the winter time than in the summertime. Cause when my brain is hot and fried, it's, a, it's hard to concentrate on anything other than dishcloths mm -hmm. <laughs> yep yep yeah I had this idea I was going to go do Christmas gift knitting during the summertime like hats and scarves and that kind of thing I haven't done any of it summer's about over right no it's no, only July too. <laughs> Well, well, school starts down here August the 2nd not that I have any school kids anymore but it makes wow. me think summer's over, you know? Right. Well, okay, second. Where do you live? I live in Alabama. Don't tell anybody. Oh, oh, oh okay. No, that's how I feel about Nashville. <laughs> yeah, I have to go to Nashville to get away. <laughs> you girls need to get together. Either. Are you in Nashville, Judy? Yeah. Yeah. You well, are. Now, tell See? probably the end of the year. I'm planning on moving, and that's what's taking a lot of my time. Just everything's going just not quite right and uh it's taking much longer yeah. somehow and i've moved a lot okay and somehow when you're 78 years old your husband's 83 and you've lived in your house for 35 years this is a major major event oh, yes. boy. And we're planning or planning on just about getting rid of everything in the end and just sort of moving and moving into a two-bedroom apartment i I sort of dug my feet in the ground and said, I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> the house and the whole thing, you know, I've, I've been, a, a, yeah, I, I want my retirement. Yeah. 
And so that's that's <laughs> you girls need to schedule a, a meet and greet at your favorite yarn shop up there in Nashville then. Well, I have to tell you a story. So um I have been to the Shake Rag workshop a couple of years, which is the MDK people put on in um Swanee, Tennessee, which is not too far from Nashville. And oh, so yeah. I met this lady at one of those workshops and I only spoke to her for a little bit of time, you know, but it just, we hit it off really well. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. She has a little knitting group in Nashville that I sometimes go up there and knit with them. Oh, where, mm. where, where, is, where is it? Where is her, it? Her, it's at her home and she, her name oh, is yeah. um, Linda D'Erico. Don't know if she has about 15 or 20 ladies and I, I don't even know any of them, but sometimes I just go to her house and knit with them. I'll oh, make a day nice. trip up there. Yep. Well, let me know when you're coming up. I will. Um, I can give you my telephone number. You can, you can not, email me. Not on this. Well, maybe maybe, how, about, how about if I try to do a, an, an introduction via email and I can like connect you to by email? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. 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 Um, I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not that. Is going out to many people. Pardon? But I'll I'll send oh, an yeah, email yeah, to yeah. the two I see of what you. you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. It's a small world. So it the is. House of Yarn is uh -huh. my favorite close by yarn shop. What's the House that? of Yarn. H A U S. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Her um, Meg's mother just died. I guess you got the email. Well, so that was my story. I don't know if you heard it about oh, my yeah. finish along. No. I bought it from Meg. Oh, okay. Okay. That was him. Yeah. I yeah. don't really know her well, but I do love her store. Yeah, she does have a lot of uh, very, very nice yarn. Mm -hmm. And the other store in town, I used to go there. I only bought one or two things there. It's down in Brentwood. And uh, I just like House of Yarn a lot better. So I have a yarn shop that's probably uh, half a mile from my house where I live, but they are so unfriendly that I'll drive to Nashville. I mean, I'll wait to get what I want to go there. So that's why I love the goat. And that's why I love the house. Yeah. Do, you, do you know that they have really short hours right now? I do, 10 to 2. Well, we, yeah. that's what we hear from a lot of visitors and it always just breaks our heart a little bit when we hear people say like, oh, wow, you guys are so friendly. You know, I have my story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little. Mm. It really, Iris, it really is. Grumpy. I mean, it's just a major think, difference. What? How could you be grumpy when you're, wow. I mean, being surrounded by yarn is its own kind of mood enhancer. And then we feel like we get the best customers all the time. Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't imagine a better working environment, really. Mm -hmm. Um. I just have to show you guys one thing and then I know we're just about at the top of the hour, but my husband is also a knitter. Oh wow. And oh. He oh, wow. is an accomplice. He doesn't knit fast, but he knits things like this. <gasps> oh, oh my god. Goodness. How nice. Mm. Show it again. Oh, oh yeah. Let me um I'll spotlight myself. Yes, he just like he just um oh, oh my gosh, that's awesome. Yeah, I would love to learn how to do that. Now that's and something that I it, think I could do. So he um, is fingering weight yarn. He was knitting on like a size zero or one or something. He's knit me a beautiful hat, um, but he really sad, likes yeah. very fine color work. He's a math teacher, so he likes oh. pattern. Oh. <laughs> and I, I tease him because he will, he's, he's like, he doesn't consider himself a pattern designer, but he's always coming up with his own little motifs. Although I think that might've been a pattern he bought on Ravelry. But this one time I was in the car and gosh, what do I have here that would even be that small? I think, okay. So you, you remember like a band-aid box, like the ones that are about this big. Mm -hmm. So I opened up the band-aid box in the glove compartment and on the top inside lid is this tiny little grid of the pattern repeat that he made for himself in pencil and I was like what is this like how 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 can you like how about some bigger graph paper he's like no no no. I just need it to be small because I want to be able to take it with me everywhere oh. <laughs> 
So he, he did join our Zoom group. <laughs> I know he should have joined the finish to show, but he finally finished it. He was at, at for a little bit of time. He was very worried it wasn't going to fit his head because guess what? He didn't cage squatch. <laughs> And so, but then he realized that with blocking, um, it would work, but he, he had set it aside because he was convinced it wasn't going to fit him. And then he was like, uh, I think I'm going to make this work. And he persevered and he finished it. So well, been a, a few years in coming, I think. Major kudos from all of us to him. Yes. I, will, I will tell him. Um, well, We're another a, another hour has flown by with us. Yeah. Um, well, I enjoyed. So we're going to take a little break next week because I'm gone. And then I think it is the, it's the ninth that we have our final Zoom for the finish line. So I will see you in a couple weeks. So I'm expecting a lot of finished projects. Just kidding. Um, no, I don't have mine done. Both. <laughs> so we'll have a fun time in a couple of weeks together. In the meantime, enjoy your knitting and hopefully you can stay cool and uh, keep getting some stitches in there. You bet. And you have a great vacation. I hope you're enjoy. going to be nice fun. Thank you guys so much yes. for being here. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. See you in a couple of weeks. Okay. Take Bye. care, guys.